Alright, before anything else, we're starting with the bingo winners! I'm totally whipping out on this one, guys. See, we had a lot of people win. And that is awesome. Uh, however, there were so many people that won. Shutfan, Lily, Iwayuru, and Caitlin decided to forfeit any request whatsoever. They could have made a really small and simple one. That would have worked just fine, but instead they gave it up. And here's what this does. Thank you very much, guys. I wanted to make sure to recognize you anyway, because the whole point of this is community appreciation. And we appreciate you. Like, seriously, very much. I mean, I could get all soppy about it if I needed to. So what we're going to do is we are going to give you guys, Shuf, Lily, Iwa, Caitlin, this recognition, and conveniently, you know what I get out of it? About seven or eight hours putting all of you together, possibly more than that. So you guys <laughs> gave me the gift of time and sleep. And I am darn well going to appreciate that. So thank you very much. Please continue participating. And that does not mean that everybody needs to just decline a prize. Yeah, come on, guys. Now, after a strange intro... How about another strange intro? We just stopped in the middle of a conversation, and now we're gonna start in the middle of a conversation. Now, for us, no time has passed since the last episode was recorded. We were trapped in a temporal bubble. Well, we just do every all of these things one day a week. See? Dude, you're breaking the illusion. Come on, man. Anyway, you may have noticed in the last episode that I suddenly began to come down with the symptoms of a cold. Stuffy nose, really runny, uh, out of nowhere in the second half. So if I'm still like that, that's why. <laughs> so if anything sounds funny, like, or something like that, that wouldn't be what it sounds like at all. But I would hope not. If you started sounding like that, I'd have to shoot you. <laughs> stab! Stab! I know I said shoot, but, you know, this is Fist of the North Star, where my gun shoots knives. Oh, that did happen that one time. Many times. <laughs> That's actually, that feels really interesting. I feel like I can clear oh, my... Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Kind of vibrates the roof of your... What are we talking about? You can, like, clear out your sinuses that way. And... We've lost our minds, I know. We're the bittersweet gamers. Are we squared? I'm the opinionator. Okay. What was happening? No time has passed, but... <laughs> We're trying to test out the, the tower. And, and Nekomaru is like, well, I could stay here if you turn me off. Or Nekomaru wasn't like that, but someone suggested turning him off and then going around and opening the door. Now, I still don't understand why we can't just leave an object. Is something gonna happen to it? Why? Well, leaving an object, and if something does happen to it, that's important data. Yeah, that's why we need to leave an object first. Like, just leave a wrench or something, Kazuichi. I'm sure you've got eight of those. That That's the whole point, yeah. It is far too dangerous, even as an experiment. It is possible that we might violate the laws of robotics even though this is the opposite of the laws of robotics, this is really more like people killing a machine <laughs> instead of a machine killing people. Hey, hey. Then why don't we just do what the BSG was griping about the whole time and just use an object? It's my student handbook. Oh, yeah? They're really sturdy, you know. I'll leave this handbook here, and we'll all move over to Strawberry Tower. And if by chance the handbook is still there, we can safely say that the two towers are the same, right? You're and, right. Let's try this. And she's taking everyone together, too. Instead of leaving one person by themselves to do something funny. I I just feel like if they left one person here, there might be danger to them when the room changes. Like, we don't well, know... Well, I agree with that. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not like leave people on the other side of the door. Oh, yeah, And not yeah. like leave people elsewhere or split up it's all of them go and, yeah and that means that everyone is going to be together so it's harder for one person to slip off although unless it isn't harder for one person to slip off i mean it really all depends uh -huh. we left behind chiaki v handbook right away and man that thing looks huge then we left grape tower and made our way to strawberry tower Hey. Including Nekomaru's functions, Monokuma sure does have a lot of useless technology. I mean, did you see how he turned buff and everything? But still, Monokuma looks like he's pretty high-tech himself. I mean, he's got a bazooka for an arm. I have not unleashed even If I get serious, yet. I will not be captured by a mere sensor. But why? Why bother? Even so, <laughs> doesn't that sound boring? Uh-huh. 
It is better to engage with it in the spirit of things. Or some other such excuse. It is strange, no? It seems you are all being quite rude to Nekomaru. Have you never heard of the three laws of robotics? Apparently you haven't either. Oh, there's four now, too. Since, really? like, the late 90s, I think. Oh, what's the fourth one? Um, I can't remember the exact phrasing, but it, it basically has to do with if a robot could, like, kill one guy and stop the annihilation of the human race, it's okay ah. for the robot to do that. Okay, putting kind of a, sort of a caveat there just in case. Yeah, yeah. The three laws of robotics? I'm not familiar, but I'm sure everyone else is. Right. Very well. I shall explain. Thank goodness, because I can't remember the second one. If this continues, I'll feel just awful for Nekomaru. The second one was a, hu a robot cannot, through inaction, allow a human to be harmed. Oh, thank you. You see, what was going to happen is I would be... If, that's why I said that, you know? Because I got it out. Because if I didn't, I'd be sitting here thinking about it the whole time being distracted. Sad, but true. But I think it's best if we head towards Strawberry Tower for now. Thanks, Billy. You really helped me out. I would have gone crazy otherwise. You're welcome. Oh, you're right. Then let us discuss this in greater detail later. Let's. She sure does find fiction interesting. She sure does. Huh? It's better if we just hurry up and check it out. Let's go. But, but I'm fishing for dialogue. Well, you got some. What else do you want? That's a fair point. So I can't help but notice you're standing next to the Sakura Tower, Nagito. Huh. <laughs> I can't believe he has such high-quality sensors and created such an elaborate setup. Well, well, it's not like this is something new. This whole time, Monokuma has been doing a lot of really intricate stuff. Are you sure you were talking about this time around and not the previous one? No, he is talking about this. He has done a lot of super intricate things. Created a movie, created video games. That's true. Stuff on a grand... Created this giant palace funhouse thing all on a grand scale. It's like... Not even talking about the Mono Beasts. Yeah, and then there's the Mono Beasts. It's just the scale of everything he's doing is totally different. It's like you look at the original Hope's Peak, and that's like only slightly grander in scale than the stuff he's been doing here, you know? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't mean to exaggerate that, but he's been going to way more trouble than he needs to, and I'm just wondering what the reason is. I, I think it also shows the difference between... between people yeah individuals yeah like junko you know she didn't really get how humans operated very well and that kind of was reflected in how monokuma acted i think so yeah hey, hey. that reminds me does coach nekomaru still get hungry i mean he's a robot now no no, no it's fine it's fine so we don't have to worry about feeding him correct Sleep mode is convenient, but while I'm sleeping, I'm utterly defenseless no matter what happens. I mean, I'm still a giant robot made of metal. You are not a giant robot. Hey, I'm a, pretty big. You are a robot made of metal. Even I'm a little worried about being left alone in that state. I mean, there's nothing the rest of you could do, but someone with the right know-how. Are, are you accusing Kazuichi? Hey. Why'd you create such an ugly-looking building? That's... Like I said, it wasn't me. It was gonna be carrots all the way down. All the... <laughs> all the elaborate stuff here just makes me think again. Cry cryogenically digitized. No, no, digital world. It, there, it's too elaborate to, to, like, physically construct all this stuff. Well, you know, it already existed back when it was an attraction at the amusement park. You're so but evil. Monokuma's the one who modified it like this. It's all his fault. Why are you calling me evil? No, he was talking about Monokuma. Oh, okay. She was talking about Monokuma. Someone. We were all talking about Monokuma. Make it sound so easy. I mean, you did turn a chicken into a cow. We, we can't forget that. How much time and energy did he put into modifying a building like this? Hey, hey. After traveling from Strawberry Hall to Strawberry Tower, if the handbook is still there, we can safely say that the two towers are the same building. Would you like me to summarize the events of this experiment that we're doing? <laughs> kind of. Where's Monomi? I see. 
I must say, this elevator is rather quiet. It is like the Toad's Wart. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> what? Hey, hey. Toad's Wart? What is she talking about? It doesn't feel like we're moving extremely fast. It seems it's moving very slowly. Ah, it's just more of the culture shock. <laughs> not really understanding... Well, no, 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 not understanding... Like, misunderstanding another language, which, believe you me, I certainly understand how that goes. Uh-huh. And also, the way you express things in one language is not the same as the way you express things in another. That is correct. Hella boss. Most tight. If so, the two houses might be surprisingly close. Na Nagito, how far were the hallways? Of course they're close. If two towers are connected in the middle, the distance between them shouldn't be that much. It's almost like there's something fishy going on here. Eh? 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 Get it? Get up a shock? Alright, let's head over to Strawberry Tower. After I talk to everyone again. Maybe... You've already read this line! You've already read this line too! That's... The three laws of robotics are laws that every robot must follow. It consists of three laws that strive for safety, obedience, and self-defense. And remember, the whole point of this is to ensure that robots will not take over mankind with their infinite power. What? She's explaining this all of a sudden? You thought I was just going to give the same line I did last time, but I had to surprise you. You did? Which means? The first is safety, human safety. Do you have a minute? In simple terms, the first law stipulates that robots may not harm human beings. The second law is obedience. Robots must obey any order given to it by human beings. I guess I was talking about the third law then. The third law is self-defense. As long as it does not violate the previous two laws, a robot must protect its own existence. Well, actually, I think what you did was summarize the fourth law. By inaction, allow other humans to die. Huh! And, but, and stipulating that, if necessary, you could, like, sacrifice one or two for a huge number. But I didn't even know the fourth law existed. I could have sworn I read that somewhere. Ah, oh, well. One thing that's interesting about these laws, of course, is someone has to put them in there in the first place. They're not natural. Mm. Did anyone put these laws into Nekomaru? Why does Sonya know so much about this? Why am I surprised about this? Yeah, that's that's actually completely in character for Sonya. Near as we can Everyone. tell. Hold on. That explanation is too insufficient. Let your teacher expand upon that. Leave it to me. Oh, now I can finally act like a teacher. I shall reclaim my dignity right here, right Let's now. Let's go talk to somebody else. Yo. What are you guys talking about? Now's not the time to talk about that stuff. Let's head over to Strawberry Tower. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> No, you were right. Perhaps we should discuss this matter some other time, such as at the inevitable class trial that will occur before we move on to the final island. Yeah, let's get the heck out of here and not listen to Motor Me. Uh, <laughs> I'm already used to being treated like this. That's right. I'm no longer down about it. B -b Baka. Don't worry, Motor Me. It's only like this because you deserve this treatment. <laughs> I don't like this. Creating this complicated building just to make us kill? Doesn't make any sense, but neither does anything else, huh? Come to think of it, can I really say something like that? Ooh. Oh. Were the first two just saying the same thing to trick us into skipping the others? Is that what it was? Now then, let's get going and go confirm it! No, Billy, don't worry. You've already read this line. <laughs> of course, I'm so worthless that I don't even merit having another line. <laughs> now then, let's see what result awaits us. Have you fiends made up your mind? Don't forget to pray to your god. Well, it's not like I have a god to pray to anyway. <laughs> my name is Gundam tonight. I already know God has been wiped out by my very own hands. That's super, buddy. Hey, hey. If we go inside Strawberry Tower from the door in Strawberry Hall, and if my handbook is still there, then okay. <laughs> Hey, 
If you press the button next to this door, once, Nekomaru, you should be able to enter Strawberry Tower. Hey, hey. And now press it. Once. Stay back. Wait! Step aside, you fiends! What? What? Do you want to press the button? Emissary of evil, in accordance with our ancient contract, the time has come to lend me your aid. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Go by four dark devas of destruction! Pierce through! Tsunaruke! Supernova Silver Fox! Sandy! <laughs> I'm amazed it had that much kinetic force just from jumping. They're uh, well trained! Uh, press the button? <laughs> Truly! This is the Skyline Lamentation! Art of the Demon Mouth! Can we just take a minute to appreciate that line? This is the Skyline Lamentation Art of the Demon Mouse! <laughs> Soon, the door of destiny shall open! Wow! Wow, amazing! Your hamsters are truly skilled. They are! And your naming sense is top-notch aesthetically! I wouldn't necessarily agree with that part, but... So you have a piece. I see. Your eyes managed to follow Sandy's movements. As expected of the Dark Lady, you have my praise. Then he like looks away when nobody else is looking and is like, <laughs> nobody else has to can look. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Truly amazing. You must have a strong, trusting relationship with them. Also, I've never gotten a chance to tell you this before, Gundam, but I think the way you act is completely normal in every way. We've got a court vizier back at the castle that acts like that. <laughs> you know, she's been complimenting him a lot. She's Has always she... the one who compliments him. Is that true? She called his hamsters cute in a previous chapter, and he and he's probably going to do that whole kind of like, doll thing that you were just saying. Mm. See? Thank you. She mm. likes the occult, after all. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't need to bother making a hamster press it. <laughs> that was pretty cool, though. Mm. Just as I thought, it's taken a while to open. Considering what we discussed earlier, the sensor will confirm that nothing is moving inside the tower, then wait for the other door to close. At that moment, as if on cue, I heard a loud sound from the other side of the door. Well, My! Oh, look over there! The moment we set foot inside Strawberry Tower, Sonia raised her voice. When I looked to where she was pointing, to no one's surprise, it's there, the handbook! This has got to be really relevant for how this chapter is going to be resolved or we wouldn't be spending so much time on this. It's just a secret isn't that it's the same room. It must be something else. Uh, it, what I, I bet mean, it has to do with how the doors open. Something like, like the that. the sensors detecting a living person. Yeah, yeah. What, what I mean is, is whatever, whatever it is that's going to actually be relevant for how it resolves is not what they're discussing. Right! Because this yes. is demonstrably true. Yep, there's no doubt. This is my student handbook. If the handbook Chiaki left in Grape Tower is here, then that means what BSG's been going on about for an episode or so is, is correct. Well, I mean, we only mentioned it the first time we saw it, and then... Going on about! Then everybody else did it too. <laughs> so, it seems that we've confirmed it. Yep. Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the same building. And depending on whether you enter from Strawberry Hall or Grape Hall, the tower becomes either Strawberry Tower or Grape Tower. Then that door over there with the grape image on it. I see. It's not the exit, but it appears it's connected to Grape House's Grape Hall. This is troubling. But it also means that we have no idea where the exit is. Hey. Well, I guess that can't be helped. There's no way we'd actually find the exit that easily. I, I, I bet, I bet when Monokuma gets what he wants, he'll have the elevator go somewhere else. That's that probably sense. how it is. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm surprised. I can't believe you already uncovered a secret like this. As expected of Chiaki, you're truly amazing. 
Normally, all you do is stare into space. But at times like this, and basically every other time too, you really pull through for Yeah, I was us. gonna say, excuse you, Nagito? I, I don't know if that was a compliment or not. However, why was this building designed so strangely? You're so evil! There's probably no reason. It's simply because it's a fun house. Do you believe me? Everything he ever says is wrong. Basically, yeah. That's all the reason Monokuma needs. Uh, what's this thing? Who are oh. you again? That's uh, my Monomi. Why did you forget about me? Because I can't eat you. Oh, I don't know how to feel about that. That reminds me. Whatever happened to the Monokuma announcement? Huh? What do you mean? According to my internal clock, it's already past 10 p.m. Oh my. Oh, is it that time already? There are cameras and monitors here. That's true. Damn it. Despite that, why hasn't there been a Monokuma announcement? Monokuma Allow me to answer! Every single day up until now, I have consistently let you know when it's morning and night on this island. However... In order to really drive the starvation home, there won't be such convenient indications of the passage of time. Exactly that. And thanks to that, you've been able to live a normal life. You guys... Did you guys mistake me for some kind of pretty alarm clock? Hello. Ah, oh, well, it's totally true that I'm pretty, but... <laughs> pretty annoying. Hey, what are you trying to say? Uh, for the time being, the Monokuma announcements are on hiatus. You can't go outside, and there are no windows here. So it's not like it matters if it's morning or night. <laughs> also, I've been thinking of a little something to replace the Monokuma announcement. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't like this. What the hell is wrong with them? Well, if there's no announcements, we can just look at the clock. Um, Both Strawberry House and Grape House have clocks in their first floor lounges. But, Nagito, the, the lounges are on the second floor. <laughs> Even if I don't look at a clock, I have my internal clock, so it's no problem for me anyway. That does seem like an obvious problem, but eh, maybe, maybe that's just maybe that's either a typo or some type of interesting slip. Maybe. And it's already past 10 p.m., right? I'm starting to feel sleepy after hearing that, and basically everything else. <laughs> Since we don't have food, it might be better if we rest and conserve our energy. Hey. For now, let's just decide our room assignments. Room assignments? Oh, good. Um, well, looks like... I guess Nekomaru doesn't need a guest room? Three people, or maybe two, depending on Nekomaru, are going to have to be in the crummy rooms. <laughs> Each house has five guest rooms, so we should first decide who's going to stay in which house. Hmm. Huh. Why don't we make things simple and split them between the boys and the girls? That sounds really convenient. Yes. Yes, let us do that. Yeah. The, the numbers, three girls and a robot. That's a bummer, but, well, I guess it makes sense. Darn it. I mean, ne if Nekomaru doesn't two, need one, it would work, but there are, you know, six guys, so... Yeah. Then, ladies first. Now then, let us begin. Now then, kittens, choose which house you would like. Um. Let's just choose Grape House. Staring at a red room is just gonna strain my eyes. Says the oh. gamer. She's right. I feel the same way. I do that too. Me too. Then the men shall have Strawberry House. Strawberry men are known for passion. What? I, what context? Hey. Also, each house had guest rooms of varying quality, right? Well, Nagito's going to choose the low-quality one because he's trash. Damn right. Sonia probably will, too. Just because it's different. To experience it. And it's pretty aesthetically interesting. Wasn't it two deluxe rooms, one standard room, and two crummy rooms? For now. And we need to decide those next, huh? Dibs on the deluxe room! But there are only five rooms in each house, right? Then one guy will be left over. Then that means there's only one appropriate way to settle this. Rock, paper, scissors tournament? Appropriate way? 
I'm not surprised. That's why I said that. 30% rock, paper, scissors, of course. Suddenly, the rock, paper, scissors battle between six guys had begun. Moirge! And the results. <laughs> oh, sorry. I ended up winning so easily. I looked into everyone's heart and predicted the outcome of the situation. Or I'm the ultimate lucky student. <laughs> That's right. Just like Damon said, I totally forgot that Nagito's the ultimate lucky student. <laughs> so, I take second place. That's fine. I was getting bored of always being on top. This way I have something to strive for. It's decided. You two will get a deluxe room. Now then, regarding the third winner, <laughs> it's me! I will be resting in the standard room. Hajime, you're going to get stuck with the girls. Damn right. Oh my god. Me and Kazuichi are next. Man. I get a crummy room, huh? Well, it's better than rooming with someone. Oi, come on! That's unfortunate, Hajime. You can rest in the lounge, but try not to do what Damon did and catch a cold. Also, wouldn't you be the winner if you got to go over with the girls? No, no, you're the loser. I'm on top, and you're on the very bottom. <laughs> That's not the way it is at all. Isn't that true? A body has been discovered. Hey, hey how about you Grape House girls? Did you all pick your rooms as well? Yep. Well, really, it was just deciding who was in the standard room. Yeah, we did. We had a brief discussion and settled things smoothly. Sonia and I have the deluxe room, and apparently Akane wants one of the crummy rooms. Oh, I thought Sonia would want it. That does make sense. <laughs> well, I guess it does have... I guess the... The deluxe room has the skull with the lollipops. Well, I guess lollipops aren't actual food, but shouldn't that tide them over? Unless it's just cosmetic? Well, I mean, if you're going to look at it like that, then Nekomaru's soda should keep everyone going for quite some time. I mean... It's got calories. Tea it becomes... can at least hydrate you. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> we've, we've got water, and if depending on the limit of Nekomaru's soda, we've got calories. That's true. That's Plus true. there's the lollipops. Now, that's not very many calories, but... I know, but, you know... And there's certainly no nutrition, but... <laughs> Would you rather die... Or live on soda for a while. Oh, the ladies like to live on soda. Get it? Because that's my last name. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Nice yeah. try. Huh? Why'd you choose the crummy room? There's still a standard room left over. It's not like that. That's good enough for me. You guys might think it's pretty crappy, but it's a palace compared to my home. <laughs> Honestly, I just don't even feel comfortable in the other rooms. So there is a standard room and a crummy room left. <laughs> Hajime, if you would like, please use one of them. <laughs> Hajime! <laughs> Hajime, not, not you, Kazuichi. Oh! Between her and Gundam flirting? And like then yeah. this treatment of Hajime and, it's not and impossible, the boat parts yeah. thing. It's not impossible that Kazuichi is just being hammered repeatedly in, in the only thing that he really cares about here. Or in everything that he can yeah. about here. Huh? Oh, hey, he hey, really hey. did win. You, you can't do that. Oh, my. Why not? Well, uh, I mean, it's dangerous. Hajime might be the traitor, you know? Well, even if he is, that means he's going to be resting here. I, um, nah. Um, what are you saying? Miss Sonia? Well, what am I? Huh? Huh? So... We haven't doubted Hajime at all. Thank you, Chiaki! Like... Even I don't think he tried to trick us. I mean, I pay attention in the trials. I don't know about any of the details, but when I think back in my memories, all I see is Hajime going... Wah, 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 No, you're wrong. And then... Then he fingers to kill her. That's what happened every time, right? Is that the guy we should be suspic suspicious of? <laughs> it seems that you're the only one who thought Hajime is suspicious. Nagito? 
You, you're the one who planted the seed of doubt in his brain. <laughs> Everybody always forgets that I have a role in things like that. Hey, really? Of all people, you're gonna say that? You're really gonna say that? Right. Hi, you mate. You can use one of our leftover rooms. Looks like you win. Thank you. <laughs> I'll feel bad about using the standard room, so I'll stay in the crummy room. But even so, it really helps that I have a place to sleep. I wouldn't want to be murdered laying in the lounge or something. Oh. Now then, it's decided. We should turn in for today. Aw, oh, man. It, like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Why is it always Hajime? We used to, we were going to be bikini bros, bro. That's why. Yeah, if somebody ever says bikini bro at me, then I'm going to have to kill them. And so, all the guys, except for me, ended up staying the night on the second floor of Strawberry House. Like, really, what is a bikini, bro? Bikini briefs was the type of a swimsuit he was trying to get Hajime to wear. That little camouflage, like, really tight. Are you assigning a large amount of significance to the fact that Kazuichi was <laughs> passing that? Maybe I am. What of it? That is an interesting bit of resentment towards him <laughs> that you bear. Does that mean anything? Because it might just mean something. And all the girls, plus my leftover self, stayed on the second floor of Grape House. I don't know why I'm talking like that. It's not like I peep. Oh, yeah? Uh, Jeez, just as I thought, I was forgotten. Well, you can take the standard room then. Well, I'm used to it after all. I'll take pride where I can. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then she just leaves. Are you saying that there's some reason for us to distrust you? Uh huh. So this is the second floor of Grape House. So it's I like finally she's going to make her quote unquote move. Uh, by which I mean, is she showing her true colors? Possibly. Possibly. I didn't really get a chance to actually look through the rest of Grape House. It was all told to me via reports. <laughs> Choosing Grape House was definitely a good decision. Huh? Uh, what do you mean? You see, Strawberry House is a quadrilateral, but Grape House is hexagonal. That means this place is far more spacious. It is quite a good bargain. Plus, it's much easier on the eyes, as Chiaki said. Huh! I never thought about it from the, like, geometric angle. Well, it just means it's bigger, but it doesn't necessarily mean better. For a princess, you sure do think about petty stuff. Sleepy. Oh, so sleepy. The deluxe rooms are the two rooms at the far back, right? Is it okay if we go already? Yo! The two rooms at the front are the crappy rooms, right? Hajime, you use the room next to the lounge. Then? So the standard room across from the lounge will remain unoccupied. Easy as pie. I shall prepare nameplates for our rooms later. I shall also include portraits of everyone's face. Because that's how this game works. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> I wonder if she's the one... Well, no, she wasn't allowed in the hospital, but... Like... Oh, the one who put the, the Fuyuhiko's plate up? Yeah. We don't really need to draw our faces, but the nameplates might be a good idea. Good night. After reaching the limits of her sleepiness, Chiaki staggered over to her deluxe room. Good day. <laughs> good night. Good day. Good morrow. Now then, I shall retire for the evening as well. Good night, everyone. <laughs> good night. See you tomorrow. After exchanging good nights and good days, everyone went into their guest room. And then she's going to, like, wake up. And it's gonna see Hajime, and she's like, "Why are you?" In the, <laughs> the guys are supposed to be in the other one, right? I should get some sleep too, but I'd rather explore the rest of this floor. Eh, I think I was assigned to the crummy room that's next to the lounge, so I can't help but notice this rather suspicious uh, hologram. Keep, keep out tape. But it, what's over there anyway? Nothing. That's the thing. Check the map. Like literally, nothing is over there. He could have just brought up the map, you know. He just saved the map, you. I couldn't remember which button it was. But here we are! Wine! Huh? Huh? You get it? Okay. It is interesting. You got that, that, uh, 
that nice strawberry candy in the other room. Here you get wine. So I can't help but notice that Sonia was talking about, like, increased room, but we can't. Like, there isn't any increased room. The extra stuff is blocked off. No, but I want to explore. This is a surprisingly shabby guest room. It's not that surprising. We've been in the ones in the other building. Also, I love the tape and cracks on the TV. <laughs> it's a little cold in here. The draft coming from the door is making me hungry? I don't know why a draft is going to make you hungry. Me either? But isn't that a pin cushion over there with some giant pins in it? That is, in fact, a giant pin cushion with like, giant pins. Those are... Oh my god, those could, are like sewing needles. Those are like acupuncture needles or something. You could really kill somebody with those. I also like the aesthetically balanced patches on the comforter. <laughs> I like all the screens that are just there. Yeah, like I, like I said, like the first time we looked at these, like I think this is a really well-designed room. Just the person is insane. Like, the rain? The mm -hmm. rain motif? Like, this is really cool, actually. <sighs> but I shouldn't be talking like that. For now, I need to endear it no matter what and count myself lucky that I'm not sleeping on the lounge. No matter what happens, I will definitely prevent a killing from happening. I won't let Monokuma get what he wants. Remember, guys, hunger comes in waves. If you can put off the hunger for an hour or two, it'll be gone for a long time. Morse code? Dit, 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 da. Don't look at me either. Uh, but... uh, okay. Ah. Uh? To tell you the truth, yeah. I'm out of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. What'd he say? To tell you the truth, I'm out of ideas. No. Oh, you mean what did he say in Morse code? What did he say in Morse code? Oh! I mean, I had, I had the right idea about dit and da, but I didn't know what the heck to do with the slash. I think the slash was just to indicate a different word, because just putting some spaces there might be a little yeah, hard. Yeah, I don't really know about Morse code, so... I really want to know what he said. That's a very interesting Monokuma theater. I'm also really concerned. Huh. He just has such a different approach compared to Monokuma 1. I mean, I guess we could say Junko, but... Yeah, yeah. Monokuma 2 certainly understands people better. I believe so. He's more of a normal person, albeit diabolical. Yeah, very insidious. It's... Morning already? I guess I don't really know. Without some way to measure the passage of time... Now that there are no Monokuma announcements, I don't feel like my usual self Remember anymore. Remember how we were always talking about ritual, 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 ritual? Here, the ritual is gone. The ritual is and everyone, destroyed. And everyone is like, what the heck is going on? There should be a clock in the lounge. I should head over there and see what time it is. That was quick, Sonia! I'm really quite talented at sprite art. I can't do art on a macro scale, but on the micro scale, you have to deal with fewer areas in which strokes can be placed. <laughs> I mean, even I've done sprite art, and I'm really bad at stuff like that. Let's see. The time is five minutes after I went to sleep. 9 a.m. It's later than I'm used to waking up, but I guess it still counts as morning. Now then. What should I do now? In now, this in this of... kind of situation now, now panicking will accomplish nothing now. That was my line. Now. It might be better if I spend time like I normally do for as long as I can. Do I hear free time events? How weird. I should find someone to talk to, or it might be a good idea to just stay in my room and conserve my energy. Why don't you try calling the other house? What a weird place for free time! I am so confused. It's a grape-themed telephone. I mean, that's not true, it's strawberry, but... 
There's a strawberry button instead of actual phone numbers. Yes, we get how this works. This probably connects to the phone in the strawberry house. So rather than try to figure things out or explore the archive, you're just going to do free time? I'm going to explore the archive. Um... Not a fan. I like how it looks like the same door that that, mo that Junko is behind. Yeah. So this is the Monokuma archive that Nagito was telling me about. It looks just as garish as I as the picture looked. Apparently, there are no clues that might be useful for escaping this place, but I really shouldn't trust anything he has to say. We really should look around and see what we can find. In the future, it may be necessary to know about the enemy. How mean do you think it would be if one of these pictures is the Monokuma... Wait. Aha! Thought you could slip one past Are you me! Serious? Famous Monokuma Quotes, Volume 1. <laughs> Here's one free massage ticket. Of course, you're the one who's going to give the massage. However, if you keep using the free massage ticket, you will eventually master the massage fist. I already know it, thanks. Never underestimate the power of the massage fist. It will impress Kempo masters around the world. Okay. So there's a few things from the Monokuma Theater from the first game. And is that calendar? Yeah, that calendar is the one with the uh, chick on it from the Monokuma. It's, oh, it's, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. was one of those. It's not the one from the uh, second murder case or anything like that. Although it might be, actually. I, I can't move or zoom in, so I can't really tell. And then we've got Monokuma in all these different poses. Is this more Monokuma quotes? Despair Boys Monokuma Successful Youth Edition. Wasn't that the name of one of the episodes? Chapters in the first one? I don't think so. What a shitty title. It's the opposite of Despair Girls. I guess so, yeah. Okay, there's more Monokuma theater stuff. Okay, so you know, it's worth thinking about this. Uh-huh. Now, it's clear that they're talking about Monokuma from the first game. Right! But... And then, of course, there's the file mentioning what happened in the first game. What I'm saying is, if that stuff is in Hope's Peak and they can't go there, why is that Monokuma's stuff here? Hmm. That's a good question. For instance, at the end of the game, you know, Monokuma Got stand back up, up and was like, like I am Monokuma. Monokuma. I, my existence is my own. So does that is mean... Is it possible that, there, that Monokuma is doing it by himself and that there isn't anyone controlling him this time? That is very possible, I suppose. In that case, it means that it's the same Monokuma. Yeah. If that is the case, I, I just... What's on this bookshelf? Monokuma's latest work. There's no way my little sister is this incompetent. Ah, uh, I've seen that around on uh, places where one uh, acquires anime. Uh, so I'm familiar with the title, but nothing else, which is, There's no way my little sister is this cute. Ah, I see. That That's kind of creepy. Does this mean Monomi? Don't tell me he writes articles when he's bored. Oh what my is, god. Yeah, what is the... Look to the right and you can zoom in a little bit more. Keep looking to the right. Keep looking to the ah, right. See what I'm saying? He's got like a chain that says Nyo Ho Ho Ho. Yeah, it's the, it's the rapper Monokuma. Okay. So everything here isn't necessarily about the first one. Is that like a tattoo on his arm? Maybe? Like a backwards baseball. Hey, there's the new ho 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 Yada yada bookshelf. What be on it, yo? Hey, there's those crabs. <laughs> Can we eat them? Monokuma's cute, meaty diary, volume one. What is this? Is this Monokuma's diary? Has, has that guy been keeping a diary this whole time? Greetings! I'm the Monokuma in charge of Monokuma. I'm the only one who looks good in a fresh salmon jacket. Anyway, it's still pretty recent, but I've made a tremendously huge discovery. A fresh salmon jacket? Is he saying he's walking around in a fish suit? I, I think he means the jacket that's salmon colored, which is kind of a beige, dark, reddish, fleshy tone. 
Well, it's not dark, but light. Earth. But yeah. Alternately, it's making me hungry for salmon. Well, this isn't the place you want to get hungry in, Damon. And I shall share it with you guys, starting now. First, squat like you're sitting in an invisible chair and put your hands behind your thighs. Okay. Then, hold that position as you raise your thighs. If you keep raising higher and higher, don't you think you'd start floating higher and higher into the air? You would, right? Right. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this a revolutionary discovery that'll cause a reform in traffic law? All it's gonna make you do is look like you're walking around like a chicken. But I can't do it. I don't have that. No, really, it's like, maca, maca, maca. You see what I'm saying here? You see, you see the, the yeah, wings? Yeah, I see you. I see I'm like a flightless bird waving my wings, and you'd be kind of thrust forward because of the thigh thing. Bummer. What in God's name did I just read? It looks like there are still several volumes to this diary, but what should I do? I was wondering if you could keep going. Burn it all is what I should do. Life game. This bookshelf has... Drumroll, please. Worldwide bestseller, The Ten Killing Commandments, Monokuma's personal guide to success and happiness. Despair, 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 despair. Oh. Somehow, I suppressed my urge to throw it on the floor and put it back on the bookshelf because you're not supposed to litter. Look at that! You've got the actual Monokuma from the Monokuma Theater on display. Uh, and here's the last one. This book here is... Deep Stories That Really Happen and Will Probably Make You Cry. All 1,000 volumes of That Love by Monokuma. Ah, like the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. I should pretend I never saw this. All it will do is make you... More pathological. Okay. Yeah, we're good. I feel like we haven't really gained anything of use here. Well. Too bad. I was really hoping to find the student files. Ah, uh, that's probably going to be a reward when we finish this. The statue of Sakura. The Monokuma, up. the Monokuma archive, but it's Monokuma from the first game. Yeah. Like, mm. is there a connection? Could this be a reference because she was the traitor, or is this a reference because this is the same chapter that she died in? I suspect more the first than the second. Yeah. Her being the traitor is the only reason I can think of that a statue of her would be here at all. Yeah, because she was working with Monokuma, and so that kind of groups her in with him, sort of. Sort of. I mean, why have a statue to her and not anybody else? Yeah. That's like the only thing that it really has, right? Uh, not even gonna look at it, No, huh? I'm not even gonna look at it. That thing is creepy. Excuse me. But we know he's not in here, which is convenient. I was worried that someone would be in this room and we couldn't I know, but that's it. what you say when you intrude on someone's places. I places? guess so. I knew you could do it. Okay, that's all the Monokumas in this chapter. Ah, I was really getting stressed out about that. That specific one, you know? <laughs> All I could do was think about go going to get it. Yeah. We can move on with life now and go to our first free time event with Fuyuhiko. Well, I'm pretty sure we never had the chance. I think you're right. It was like Byakuya. He just didn't want to, and then when he was recovering, we couldn't hang out with him. Damn it! <laughs> How much longer do we have to stay in this place? I feel like it's gonna make me rot to death, and it's only been one day! Hey, Fuyuhiko, how's that wound on your stomach doing? This really is the first chance you get, then. I we see. weren't wrong. Huh? It's fine. Nothing to worry about. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. That should be affecting him, hunger-wise. Well, it just makes it more difficult to eat. Actually, it's better for him. You recover I... more when you're not eating. All right. That... I didn't know that. It's true, actually. Seriously, science backs this up. Oh. Um, two years ago, somebody won a Nobel Peace Prize for the discovery of a process, autophagy, that only happens... I said Peace Prize, but I mean a Nobel Prize for uh, 
science for discovering autophagy, which is a process that only occurs when you have not consumed food in 11 to 16 hours. And your body heals? And among other things, it accelerates healing. Huh. Uh, it can be used as treatment for a lot of diseases. Remember how sometimes... I mean, it's been proven to work sometimes. I'm not making claims that I'm not making. But remember how... Remember the whole starve a cold, feed a fever yeah. thing? Yeah. Why do you think that happens? Why is it that animals who are sick don't, don't eat? eat? The, the common the, the virus. The common wisdom was this. We just forgot about it. Huh. So that's this your, is actually good for him. That's your fascinating medical tip with the bittersweet gamers. Ta-da! I thought you'd say that. You thought I'd talk about autophagy? No, no, no. Good, I wasn't saying that anyway. That was some other guy. You must have abnormally strong willpower to actually slice open your own stomach like that. There is no way you could say that that would not sound stupid. Well, I said it, so there. And again, you are the ultimate Yakuza. I, I agree with that. That's ridiculous. Like, could you imagine doing it? Especially for a kid. Everything in your brain screams no self-harm. Even if you're the sort of person who has a lot of problems, a lot of mental problems, and need help, and you're, say, cutting yourself, okay? You're not killing yourself right. when you do it. Whereas, whereas, like, committing seppuku or harakiri, if you're doing this, you know that you're gonna die. And that you're inflicting a mortal wound on yourself, and it's so painful. Like, what does it take? The, sur the instinct to survive is one of the strongest primal instincts in the world. So you have to have such great force of will. You know, like, like he says here, it just goes to show you the uh, power of duty and conviction. Because the thing was, you know, everyone was like, my God, you idiot, don't do that. And then he was still recovering for such a long time. But you know what that also said, to me at least... Uh, he was serious. He was oh, dead yeah. serious. And you can't doubt him after he did that. And however much he dislikes his family name, he is still a Yakuza and, ha and had some sort of belief in that way of life. Whether it's the way he was raised or just obligation that he feels or what. He, he probably likes being a Yakuza but doesn't like how much control his family's putting on him. Whether he likes being a Yakuza or not, it might also be that he is one, so it doesn't matter if he likes it or not. That's true. Hmm. I just have Yakuza blood flowing in my veins. There's nothing strong about that. You know, I did some thinking about this when I was in the hospital. Like, maybe this is all a dream. A dream, huh? Funny you should say that. How great would that be if we could just wake up and everything would be fine? Oh, sorry. Obviously, you'd be thinking about that more than I would. Well, <laughs> that's not true. I've seen plenty of people die up till now. And as long as I'm burdened with the Kuzuri you name, I'll always be dealing with a mountain of bodies. Jeez. But you guys aren't like me. It's a sick joke to see students who live honest lives bumping each other off like this. This guy's always known violence and death. I see. He's gotten used to it. Huh. Are you scared to talk to me? A little bit. But... Jeez. There's no need to hide it. I'm used to being treated with caution by everyone. Besides, don't you remember the way I was acting when we first got here for such a long time? It's the same thing. I don't think anyone was ever too intimidated by him. Because they kept reaching out to him. Yeah, Chiaki certainly did. Chiaki reached out to, like, everyone, a lot of people. Hence the Chiaki is too perfect thing. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make me dislike her, quite the contrary. Right, right, right. Hey. The world is a barbaric place, especially my world. Everyone I know tries to settle things with violence. You guys have different values than I do. Hmm. I, I don't think he I don't think that's entirely true. I don't think it's entirely false either, but I think that he might be making he might be overly separating himself here in a way that he doesn't have to. Keep in yeah. mind that was the origin of all of his problems. You're right, you're right. The way his family raised him and the way he'd been treated uh, his whole life. <laughs> it's like he's trying to quarantine himself so that things he thinks that are bad about himself won't affect others. 
Yeah, that, that's an interesting way of looking at it. That's probably why he's so burdened by it. Poor guy. He clearly accepts it, and he may even like and believe it, like you had said, but I think it's like he knows there's something wrong. And maybe he feels like he can't help or do anything about it? Yeah, and so he doesn't want to wrongly inflict it on others. Wants to keep everyone out of his world. Yeah, Keep yeah. them safe. My old man likes to say predators are always stronger than their prey. He's a hothead. Even if it's just a minor argument, he'll come at you with everything he's got. Jeez. And when him and my mom fight, she seriously tries to kill him. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding? It's amazing I'm as well-adjusted as I am. Being a Yakuza means you can even kill the man you love to get your point across. Oh, oh my god. I don't know if that's determination, conviction, or rank idiocy. <laughs> Frankly, with those kind of parents, it's a miracle he turned out as well adjusted as he did. That's what I just said, yeah. yeah. Huh. I've been hearing stuff like that since before I was old enough to understand what's going on around me. What? Did your father just like stand outside and lean into your mother's like belly and be like, You gotta be the strongest lion in the in the crib, boy? Yeah, he did that! It was freaking creepy! Uh, that's a pretty outrageous home life. The worlds we both live in couldn't be more different. Maybe I don't actually know. Like... There were a few times where I nearly got killed in the aftermath of my parents' fights. Oh, God! Echo. But whenever something like that happened, Pecco was always there by my side. I'm sorry, I made you remember something painful. Huh? What? You don't need to apologize for that, you strange bastard. But still, I'm the rightful successor of the Kuzuryu clan. I don't get overwhelmed very easily. I can believe that, especially now. <laughs> By the time I was in the second grade, I didn't cry even if I lost a fight. And I mean, you look at me, it's not that easy for me to win a fight. <laughs> I see. Uh, good for you? That sounds kind of patronizing? Hey, bastard. Good yeah. for me. Don't treat me like a kid. I'm sorry. That's what the line said. Like you, <laughs> you, like you said. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say to him. Anyway, it's not much, but I am starting to get to know Fuyuhiko a little better. Like, I'm not trying to oversell how considerate, or overrate how considerate he is of other people, but he's pretty considerate. He's really considerate. He has every reason to actually have given himself all the way over to that lifestyle and just become a brute and a monster. I think there's time for me to move around more freely. What Jackie, a... you appear like you have something you want to say to me. What a weird way to phrase that. I wonder if we can actually hang out with her this time. Oh, you're right. Do you want to if we can? No, but I want to see. Okay. Last chapter, Fuyuhiko was, the goods are in the fucking lobby. So this time... Yo. Fuyuhiko's in the fucking lobby. This chapter, it's actually hang out with a guy we've never gotten a chance to. Come forth, O oh person with the most interesting character arc so far. <laughs> I bet Nekomaru likes poop coffee. I bet he does like poop coffee. You know, maybe we should have hung out with Nekomaru, but... Eh, that's what island mode's for. Part of me thinks we ought to give him this. Doesn't it seem as though there's something wrong? Like, you know, it's like everyone's gonna starve to death. But I have all this food. But Hajime is carrying around all this steak and food. <laughs> I kind of feel like he'd want these. Here you go. I got this sweet bag of potato chips. Good enough for right now. I'll worry about giving him stuff he'll really like later. Right? You're giving me a bag of Damn potato right. chips in a time when we're all starving to death? <laughs> Why do you have a bag of potato chips? Don't worry. Just be glad you're getting some. Do you have any more? Is there another free time event? <laughs> There's something you're not telling me. I don't okay. know what to think of this. <laughs> well, I guess I'll take this bag of potato chips. Good old 650 calories or some crap. <laughs> hey, Hajime. Ugh, never mind, it's nothing. What? Now I want to know. That's just how human nature is. Shut up! B what? Mind your own business! But we were hanging out! I'm just... 
I'm just, you know, looking for something. Huh? I mean, shut the fuck up! It's not like I'm looking for anything! He seems strangely on edge. Yeah, like he's Jeez. acting like he used to. Yeah. It just means there's something he's really uncomfortable about. Yeah. Damn it. If I just had that, I wouldn't feel so pissed off. But someone's always at the supermarket, so I can't just calm down and go look for you it. You think it's the cookie he likes? Yeah, I think it's the cookie he likes. The shit. I feel like I'm going through withdrawal or something. He's starting to sound a little dangerous, but this means there's something he wants, right? Man, between Hiyoko, Fuyuhiko, and, and Akane, yeah. it just seems like there's this, uh, this food addiction going on. What in the world is Fuyuhiko looking for? Something sweet. I'm pretty sure this is wrong, but... Do you want to eat something sweet? Like fried what? dough cookies, because it's in your report card, man. I answered your question before you asked it. What? Well, how did you know that? You've been reading my personal information or something? Well, when I talk to someone, it my, my little uh, e-handbook magically updates with salient details. What? What? I seriously got that right? Bastard! If you tell anyone about that, I'm going to bury you next to that mountain over there. You don't have to be so angry. I like sweet things, too. You see that mountain? Do you see the mountain? No. Neither do I. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to break <laughs> our way out of here, find a mountain, and bury you by it. That's how fucking pissed I am. I got it. I got it. Um, sweet things calm your nerves. They do? They also nourish your brain. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a nutritionalist. Well, it's true that the brain runs on glucose. So it's, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just us here, after all. But the brain can turn other things... Yeah. Anyway, ah, shut up, Damon! Yeah, but still, a guy like me shouldn't like sweet stuff. It'd be embarrassing if anyone knew that the heir to the Kuzuryu clan likes eating fried dough cookies. I like fried dough cookies, too. They taste best when you eat them with milk. Bastard! Hey, you bastard. I am not having a fucking conversation with you about eating fucking milk and cookies. You want that convo? You go talk to Monomi or some shit. I have a reputation, an image to uphold. Okay, maybe I'm not a murderous motherfucker the way I was acting like, but you know what? I don't eat milk and cookies. Never, ever say that again. Huh? Fried dough cookies? No, fuck you! Fuck you! Don't fuck with me! No, the other one! Oh, you mean the thing listed under your dislikes? Milk. <gasps> you. You! Oh! The truth of why I'm so sure it has come out because Japanese culturally believe that you should have lots of milk in order to grow big and tall. This is a gag that's shown up repeatedly as a trope, such as info that a alchemist and apparently also myself. Self, 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 self. I think he's dead. Anyway, whatever that's about. Didn't you hear what I just said? I'll seriously fucking bury you! Don't say the M word! This is bad. His eyes look real intense. I've never seen anyone get so mad over milk. You just fucking thought about milk! Damn it. If only my guts were stronger and I wasn't lactose intolerant. That's it! You and I could have. Shit, I want to swallow it all in one gulp, you know? But with my height. It's okay, man. But he really doesn't have to be so hostile towards milk. There are other ways to get calcium. Eat a, eat a box of Tums. Right? I don't know if this is a good time to say something like that, though. Yeah. Uh, you laughed, didn't you? Only on the inside. <laughs> no, I didn't. You thought there was something wrong with my breakdown, didn't you? No. You're definitely laughing. It doesn't show on your face, but I can tell you're laughing on the inside. You can tell we're laughing, too. You. I won't let you forget this. You too, PSG. You keep trying to butter me up. But in the end, you don't think much of me at all. Fuyuhiko mumbled under his breath as he walked away in a hurry. Maybe we should have given him those secret boots. Well, that was an unexpected side of Fuyuhiko. I feel like I barely got out with my life. When he talks like that, it's like he's a completely normal guy for his age. In all seriousness, I don't think it was unaccept or unexpected at all. Yeah. For him to be so sensitive about his height? Not at all. He's so sensitive about his height because of the family that he's in. 
He's supposed to intimidate people, but Not, he is yeah. like, he is literally a like ninety pound. He is like literally a ninety pound weakling. In fact, oops, it might even be dangerous to think about completing that thought. Like, isn't he basically like what Captain America was before the Super Soldier treatment? Kind of, yeah, but I don't think Captain America was as short as him. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Do you see? <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> This isn't my room. Oh, we're getting another free time event. What the heck? We don't know what time it is. I mean, I guess we kind of do. I feel like we have to hang out with Nekomaru. I agree. Oh, he's got his original po thing up. He doesn't have a robot one. That's nice. It means Sonya thinks of him as the old Nekomaru. Yeah, like you are Nekomaru. That is a really good point. That is a really good point. Oh. You know, I can't help but feel like I'm probably just not being generous enough to Sonya, but there's, like I said, it's something off-putting. But she does keep doing these nice things. I wonder why it is that, that we have a harder time well, recognizing the kind things she does for others. It might be because she will occasionally say things that I at least find a little suspect. It might, uh, might be, as I said, uh, that she's just in the background a lot. I mean, she does do nice things for people, but she's still pretty reserved overall. Well, like... That might create a kind of distance, emotional distance. Maybe. I really like the way that she handled the Hyoko thing. Me too, me too. And then this small little detail, which possibly is... Well, it's not like he doesn't have a sprite. Yeah! It's, not, it's in a report card. But, like, this small little detail, you are Nekomaru. And, like, worrying that what happened with Hyoko was her fault when it clearly wasn't. I just feel like like I ought to like her more, but there's something off-putting about the way she acts. Oh, it's you! You've come at the perfect time! I need to enhance my drink bar! Give me a pen? What? I'm really scared! What are you going to do to <laughs> enhance it? Thanks for the help! Now make me feel things? Um, I spent time today helping Nekomaru develop new products for his drink bar by telling him sad and funny stories. I don't know what's going on anymore. Well, no one's going to starve to death, but malnutrition may kill us all. Now here's the question. Does Nekomaru like different things than Nekomaru? Probably not. We could give him the poop coffee. But, or we could, but it's so rare, maybe we should save the poop gift. Let's save the poop coffee. For island mode. <laughs> because I'm assuming we're not going to get all of Nakomaru's FTEs. Probably not, especially if he's going out this chapter. It seems like that's going to happen, but it may not, you know. It may not. It just seems weird that there'd be a robot guy running around after, you know what I mean? It does seem weird. You know, just seems like this might actually be good for him. I bet he'll love it. So, this will enhance it. Whoa! The, this is... Why do you have this? No, no questions. Just give it to me. My friend, you have my gratitude from the bottom of my heart. Mm. Nekomaru is staring at me and groaning. I don't know how to say it, but the way he's looking at me is making me extremely uncomfortable. He's going to give you a massage or take a dump on you. Mm. What? Hajime, lend me your body. What? Whoa, whoa hey! Whoa, whoa. Ah! Nekomaru felt me all over my body before I quickly broke free. Wait a minute. Isn't this how one of Sakura's FTEs went? Or no, no, the first time you talked to her, she was all, like, poking Makoto and, like, feeling his muscles. Yeah, yeah. But what the heck? What's going on? <laughs> Just as I thought, I wasn't wrong. You're also a robot! You will become an amazing athlete if you train yourself. What? Hmm. You must have been born with good bone structure. We'll need to change your diet, bulk up your muscle mass, basically rebuild you from the ground up. 
Why do you say rebuild? Wait, hold on. What are you talking about? You're calling me an athlete, but what are you talking about? Now, what are you talking about now? Now, I'm talking about you, obviously. What? I, I'm a manager, you know, I, I trade people, make them big and strong and all that kind of stuff. It's my job to help athletes figure out what they want to become. I don't mind which athlete you want to become, but it's wrong for me to decide that what for you. What if you don't want to become an athlete, though? No, no, no. I'll decide that for you. <laughs> Whether or not he decides, he's treating me like an athlete for some reason. But it doesn't matter at all? <laughs> Let's see. For example, how about that? That? Why is he so obscure <laughs> with it and that and... Using your entire body to fight over a ball. A sport that is truly the manliest of men's sports. Now, is he talking about rugby or American football? Probably rugby. I don't really want to think about it, though. Nekomar is probably talking about rugby. Is it rugby? Pay attention! <laughs> you got it right! Bullseye! My ears. Huh? Rugby was originally a religious service in the Shinto region. What? What? The men would fight over a bundle of rice plant ears in hopes of a rich harvest. It's a holy sport said to have originated when the first bead of sweat fell onto the first rice seed. By bike books. There we go. <laughs> no way. I don't know anything about rugby, but I've never even seen a match in the first place. Fool. That doesn't matter at all. Your calm judgment skills, your high degree of mobility. Ah. And you obviously know the importance of teamwork. You may very well be a natural on the rugby field, the ultimate rugby player. Plus, you can use your algae to, like, stab people. Well, maybe in rugby you could. Aren't you overestimating me a bit? <laughs> my eyes are never deceived, however artificial they might be. Even if you might be. But what if there's a bunch of cola in your eyes? If you're ever interested, let me know. I'll take care of you anytime. Nekomaru walked away with a big smile on his face. It you know, left me terrified. Honestly, the timing of this is kind of funny, but it, it's sort of profound. What do you mean? At a time like this. Oh, when he's, when he's different, he's when, still the same? Yeah, when everything about him has changed permanently in ways that he'll never get back. He was given a chance to still be himself. I like that. Unless, of course, he isn't a robot. He has a motor, not a heart, right? I, I, I mean, you know, I don't want to think about that right now. We're in happy times. Even if he compliments me, I don't think I'd be any good at rugby. Or do I really have that kind of natural ability? Hmm... My heart is swayed. Is this the work of the ultimate team manager's scouting skills? How fascinating! That's awesome! We'll go ahead and end it here. Presumably this means... Man, I'm sure being presumptuous. <laughs> Indubitably! Presumably this means that things are actually going to begin happening. That we did all the exposition, we did all the basic exploration, and we did... All the free time events. So now things are going to move up a gear. I think. Whoops. That slipped out. So did my joke about moving it up a gear. Hey, hey. Shit! Dantarumpa. Ha 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 ha!